I started again. It, it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. There was too many pins. I was using every single pin on the Teensy. Uh, and I've got loads of dividers going on everywhere and I didn't like it. It was messy. So I ripped it out, started again, being the bloody perfectionist that I am. And it's an annoying at the best of times. Anyway, uh, what we've got here is a... That's a Teensy 4.1. I think, and that's a 406716 channel multiplexer. So what I'm doing at the minute is wiring all the cells in. Um, so that I'll only need literally one pin to read the data off these cells, all the voltages. Uh, I'm also, I've got, I don't know where I've put them now. Where have I put them? Where are they? Where are they? Found them. I, had, I bought these, I don't know how long ago, the TP405, TP4056, TP I bought these when I did version 2 e-bike, that's how long I've had them, um, they're basically USB chargers, so what you do is you plug a USB connector in there and then you get voltage out of there and it automatically uh, it'll auto, auto, automatically charge a cell, as in one of these, up to 4.2 volts. So, I think, I don't know yet, I think I'm going to be using these because these, uh, looking briefly at the data sheet, you can actually see, you can have constant voltage or constant current. And that's basically, that, that there is a nice, that I, oh, f Get your words out, Tony, you twat. That there is the controller IC, which does all the sensing, the voltage sensing and everything else, and um, I think it's got a built-in MOSFET. Is there? Well, there must be. There's, uh, is there? <laughs> there ain't one anywhere else. Uh, anyway, it's got a built-in uh, cut-out MOSFET, uh, purely to stop the charge when it's full. And two LEDs, one red, one green, I think, from what I remember. Anyway, because these are all single cells, they're not in series, they're not in parallel as such, although the negative is actually linked, the positive isn't, I can use these somewhere, somehow, I don't know how yet. Possibly have one on each on the top there, although that's going to get very, very hot. I haven't thunk this through very well. I'll probably put them down there and just, you know. I'm going to use those. It's going to be fine. Believe me. It will be perfect. Oh, f I had enough of this. Uh, we've got two. That keeps getting so hot. We've got two multiplexers now. One for reading the voltage and one for firing the MOSFETs. Now I don't know what the hell's going on here, but if I put these batteries in there, see the second one, whether it's plugged in or not, it says it's plugged in. Zoom in, although you're probably not going to be able to see it because it's strobing. So if I plug that one in, or I unplug it, it's connected, but I've checked all the connections, or I've checked everything. There's nothing bridged, there's nothing, I don't get it. And then I put that one in, and those two lights, although you can't really see them, those two lights go out. And then it populates four. And then if I put the one over the right hand side, over the left hand side, I get the two end ones come up. Although that's not even in the end. I don't get it. Anyway, I've spent literally two weekends trying to get this working right. The first one that I did with the uh, the Teensy 4, that worked, but I ran out of COM ports. So, I think what I might do is do another version. And the other version, I think this is causing the problem, which is the one that fires the MOSFETs. So I think what I'll do is, I'll, yeah, I burnt my finger on that earlier. <laughs> I don't know why it got hot. I've noticed as well, if I unplug the power, 
I think that's when it starts messing up. This uh, vero board here, this is actually soldered in the middle. I, there was two pieces, I cut them and then I soldered it in the middle and I think it's causing the problem or causing a problem. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put link wire across there rather than using bloody big solder blobs on the, on the underside. I don't know, I don't know what the hell's causing the problem. I will get it done. I am convinced, and I am, ugh, I've got to get it done now, it's pissing me off. I'm going to do it again, I'm just going to take it apart. So I'm sorry I haven't been around, it's purely because of this, and the reason why I'm doing it this long, this, this in depth, is because of Charles. No other person, Charles, because I've got a bag of these things, and I've got to use them now. <laughs> Why do I do it? Well, believe it or not, this is version 3. Uh, version 2, uh, this is part, sorry, this is part of version 1, which didn't work very well because... F*** knows. <laughs> I didn't lay it out with any expansion or anything else in mind. And Charles, which I'm going to leave a link in the des description to the stuff that he's doing, uh, He's decided to do a full-blown capacity test, not just a drainage sort of um, balance test thing. So I decided to do that. Anyway, I had to rip it apart uh, because there wasn't enough room for the things that I need. So I did version 2, and version 2, when I put a few cells in, uh, it was reading out. If I put number 1 in, it was fine and put number two in and it was also reading out a number three and then I go a bit further down it was in random points put one cell in it was reading on, on two channels and I couldn't for the life of me figure out why now here's the board which I kept uh, what was happening was which I found out only after I've spent a full day building this one what happened was is these MOSFETs I didn't know if they touch on this piece here, it messes all the readings up, which I don't really understand why. Because they're only ground, and all these are, these are ground anyway. So I don't understand fully why it was doing it, but anyway, now I know that, I've separated them, and that's all I needed to do with them, to be honest. So, at the minute, I'm basically back to square one. Uh, the batteries are only monitored, they're not balancing, they're not doing anything at all at the minute. And what I've got to do is, oh yeah, and also it's three high now, those resistors, so that's 75 watts of discharge. Now I could have used these, these are 100 watt uh, 1k resistors, but I couldn't figure out where the hell to put them, and I couldn't figure out how the hell to use them. And people are going to say, why didn't you put it on the negative rail, th like three of these in parallel or four of these in parallel. It wouldn't work like that purely because I wouldn't be able to read the voltage properly. Anyway, this is the way that I'm doing it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I've got to wire up, there's, there's two opto-isolators, sorry, there's two opto, there's two multiplexers. We've got one for reading the voltage of the cells and all the voltage readings all the cables go in the front there right directly to the cells and then I'm going to have one for the discharge side of it which fire, all that does is fires uh, the resistors so I'm going to wire that up now and then in the middle here we're going to have a bank of TP4056's uh, which will do the charge side I've got a 5 volt 60 amp power supply somewhere so that'll do that so that's what all this is for so the reason why I had to re redesign it all this tape here is just to cover a join, literally, I had to because I had to join these two pieces together. So I'm going to crack on with that, and then it will not be finished, ever, <laughs> as usual. Well, I am officially rather f***ed off. No, uh, it's very, very tempting, very, very tempting. This multiplexer... Here, this one will read all the voltages of the cells, that's fine. This one here is the output to fire the MOSFETs to discharge or balance or, or do whatever. 
that TNC only outputs 3.3 volts on the digital pins it ain't enough to fire the MOSFETs which need a 5 volt, right, uh, need a five volt pulse so I've got to take that TNC off this has taken an incredible amount of time to actually get this far uh, it don't really do a lot it balances, it discharges is that it? Oh, well, you can monitor the cells, that's it. So we've got 0 to 15 because that's the way that they're numbered in Arduino. What we've got here is obviously the OLED display and it's just displaying all the voltage of all the cells. Now if I plug them all in and I reset it, what it should do... Why isn't it working? Right, I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know. There is back feed on it. If I turn this off and plug all the batteries in, this multiplexer gets ridiculously hot. It starts smoking. I don't know why. So what I have to do is plug the power in first and then plug the batteries in. Which is a sort of defeat in the object, I suppose. So if I plug all the batteries in and then I press reset, I can't turn the power off because the oh, sake. I'm going to put this to one side because I've got important things to work on. What's happening is, is I've got back feed. I don't know how, I don't know where at the minute, but what happens is if I plug a battery cell in, it powers everything up. So what I need to do is possibly put a FET on the negative side so as when I plug the batteries in there is zero I plug the Arduino in and then it powers it and fires the FET up and connects all the cells you won't believe the amount of time this take is taken to get this I don't know why this is happening anyway it don't work yet